students uh, we have learned the part in part one the jet transforms pole and zeros now we will extend our vision into the next part that uh, what is unit circle here you can see that is a unit circle that is a jet absolute value of jet is equal to one that is unit circle and there is a poles uh, right now that's alpha is less than one and alpha is greater than one uh, that means the unit circle means uh, the value of uh, the pole and the zero is one and uh, the value of the that, that is the imaginary axis y axis and that is the real axis in the real axis you get the value one the imaginary axis you get the value one so so that is the unit circle so if the value of the uh, alpha that consists and that exists and that uh, really bounds into the there's a less than one that means that that is bounded by the circle that is a bounded circle and uh, if it is greater than one that is outer circle that is not bounded by the jet transform uh, now you can see that uh, the jet transform what is the jet transform properties so it's very important for your examinations that what kind of properties are jet transform really holds first of all the property of linearity property the jet transform operation is linear linear means that the jet in jet transform the linearity property consists of two different properties first is superposition and uh, second is multiplication as you can see here uh, that uh, in linearity property if the jet transform is linear so you can get each and every part uh, of that is the that, that is the function first function and it is the second function it has different type of uh, co coefficients and different type of functions are there as you can see by dots i have sir, i have just put the dots on the circle uh, in the second bracket as the functions and uh, the c1 c2 is the coefficients but after jet transform it doesn't uh, make any hamper on the value of the coefficient the coefficient really exists like that but the jet transform of the fk the function transforms it transforms it to the f1 jet and the fk2 transforms to the f2 jet and where the fi jet that means the uh, function of uh, the jet transform so that is the jet transform of the function that is i1 comma 2 and the second uh, theorem is shift theorem as you can see that if there is any kind of shifting on the function that will be the jet to the power multiplied by the transformation of the function so uh, just uh, give you an understanding on that occasion I have taken a function like that uh, I have taken a function that is uh, you can say fk is equal to k minus 3 so whenever you jet transform the fk function here after jet transform it transforms is like that it it, 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 it will be if it will be fz the fk will be fz okay the fk will be fz and at it, that is the k minus 3 so the jet to the power minus 3 that will be multiplied to the fz section uh, alternatively if uh, if anything positive if anything positive on that occasion mm -hmm. you see that uh, if anything is positive in that direction so you can uh, make an understanding that uh, if uh, z there is a shifting this time shifting property that's I that you have learned from the previous uh, signal sections if you see that that is uh, z uh, minus the z plus 4 and if you want to sorry uh, if it is k plus 4 so how you can write it after transformation that will be z to the power 4 positive and fz
So that is the shifting property. The shifting point that how much it shifts, it's po it will be po it will be it can be positive, it can be negative. Uh, it will be the power of the jet transform. That's it. Uh, now there are some proof on the jet transform. Let take f jet. Uh, there is a simplified equation of the power series f not uh, plus f one jet inverse minus and f two jet inverse minus two. And after performing the jet transform onto the power series, as you can see that each and every part minus m minus m plus one minus m plus. That means the shifting property will be imposed here by taking m and uh, as you can see there the sh there is a shifting property on that section and but if i is equal to 0 that means it uh, it's for, uh, for negative i because uh, the i cannot be negative so it should have to be 0 so taking that value we get the value like that is z transform there is an example of uh, jet transform right now as you can see here so here you can see that that uh, considering a generation of new discrete time signal from fk via gk gk is equal to fk minus fk minus 1 we call linearity and shift value if you want to uh, we call the g linearity and shift value the gk will be gz and fk and fk minus 1 uh, will be 1 minus z inverse fz and uh, as you can see here uh, the li recalling the linearity and shift property you uh, definitely get this because fk is equal to in the uh, that is the linearity property that means jet transform has uh, given uh, just uh, it just works in the both both parts so fk will be fz fk minus 1 will be fz z to the power minus 1 and just uh, taking the fz from uh, the both sides you will get 1 minus z inverse like that now now you can see that the cos omega k t so first of all just to, we have to use the Euler's equation uh, Euler's theorem that is the Euler's theorem to make the cosine or sinusoidal signals to uh, uh, exponential signals that is the conversion process we get this then we take the e to the power j omega not t as alpha and take the jet transform right there and after that we take the jet transform as the real value of that that is 1 by 1 minus alpha z minus z inverse minus 1 that is our uh, that is our sole equation and just transforming it like that we get this and uh, after that uh, if we just uh, if we just put the value of cos omega t naught as uh, replacing substituting uh, substituting the e to the power j omega naught t we will get that so that is just a transform of uh, cos omega t now what will be the inverse jet jet transform so uh, given fz to determine fk that means it will be transferring the fz to uh, fk is completely inverse to the previous section so fz is equal to f not f1 z inverse uh, f2 z inverse minus 2 f3 z inverse minus 3 fk may be obtained by power series expansion it suffers from cumulative errors okay now the inverse jet transform process alternatively we can take this equation and the both side z to the power z to the minus n minus 1 and after that we just use the series formulation like that where closed contour, uh, contour uh, gamma encloses uh, origin okay now uh, hence we get this type of uh, equations right now that means 1 minus twice pi uh, that is twice pi j uh, integration of z divided by z minus 0.5 j to the power k dz by z that means it is the equation of inverse z transform that this pole at z inverse uh, z minus 0.5 the residue is 0.5 to the power k and that is the residual uh, method of inverse z transform so let take yz is equal to gz gxz and just uh, make them that is gz means that 